do you be, do you believe that um, biology chemistry is changing from because when when students normally thinks about it, I mean, when I was a student, what I think or what it reminds me, it's people in white coats in their labs doing with working with the tubes, <laughs> and yes. today it's changing. I mean, computers is changing, com computing is changing everything. So, how did you imagine uh, biology, biochemistry, biophysicists yes. are going to be in the next? Uh, probably five to ten years. First of all, they could still wear white coats, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the, uh, there would be two direction, directions of doing the experiments, which could be more and more sophisticated, but will still be done with a lab, though there could be more and more automated machines. And with regard to understanding, which is really a longer process, uh, the experimentalist should realize that uh, real under understanding require computers. So there are experimentalists who are afraid that, uh, well, the computers will replace them, but this is not the case. I mean, one complement the other. And uh, the computers are going to be stronger, more effective, suggest new experiments, but unless it works experimentally, uh, you cannot prove that it, it right. is a real direction. Oh. Professor, yes. I also by myself, I'm a biochemistry. I started okay. some years ago. I, okay. I started some years ago, yes. did that. My question, you said about youth also to inspire them that they can get wherever they are, they can go and do what they want to do. Tell me something. When I started, you saw biochemistry, for example, in Mexico, yes. like something to copy what they was happening or to do something else. How do you think your project about yes. proteins and everything can inspire other people uh, to do their... It's in part, I of course also want uh, young and old people to understand my direction, but the inspiration comes from uh, showing them that uh, if you start without any clue on any directions, uh, you study and then you take a direction which looks impossible and push it, you end up with important results. So this is the inspiration. It's not. Uh, of course, if, if you follow what other people did, you could also progress and find new things. But uh, I meant in my inspiration to say that if you choose a direction which looks very, very challenging and push it, uh, it's very likely that something impressive will come out of it. When you started, yes. you started in Israel, yes. and you started, and you worked also in the Weizmann Institute. Yes. There were not so much computers. Nobody thought about computers. What made you change your way? Because when you were yes. making chemistry, it was like Carlos said, doing with, may, yes. maybe with that, with a microscope, I don't know, working like that. It was not so. OK, so. How, what made you change to, to, to go to a first theoretical? First of all, when I already finished my undergraduate, uh, I already saw that uh, Computers may help not in modeling but in solving. Uh, you know, if instead of using calculator, you could use a computer. And it so happens that I went with my PhD to a person who was the new director of the Weizmann Institute, and he decided, though he never knew computers, uh, to. He moved from statistical mechanics and analy analytical models. He felt that you need computers to model such complex systems. So with tendency to use computer, and with uh, being his only PhD student at the beginning, uh, I, I started a project which was a computer project. So it's not... Uh, I knew what I want to do, I want to understand enzymes, but uh, this was very distant directions and uh, my first task was to start to program the way small molecules behave. 
So it's not that uh, I, I did not see until maybe 1976 that this is a, a really new way to understand better science. It just, uh, it I, came. I, I happened to be there kind of in the right time and eventually I realized that this is a very powerful tool and later I realized that it's, uh, that I would believe my computer much more than what other people are telling me. So, but this was a process. And tell me something. For many people, you, yes. you work with proteins, you study what proteins yes. do and how are they yes. doing. For many people, for normal people, yes. what is the goal of your study? What do you think is going to change our lives? Because we everybody said you won a prize, a Nobel Prize. But what is happening with that project? For what is for me that I don't know okay. anything about proteins or for anybody that no, doesn't I'm know. Sure that the you only thing about pro eat proteins. Exactly. Yeah. The only thing I know about proteins is that the doctor told me you need to eat so much proteins yes. or you don't have to eat so much proteins and look at the cereals that they have proteins. But, but what is the story but, about? But if I tell you that anything in your body is controlled and run by proteins, uh, the way the protein, the sequence is dictated by DNA. But what actually does the work is always proteins. So if these are all the systems in your body, it means that when you have a disease, it's a disease, it's always a disease protein or sometimes several proteins or the way proteins are going to the cell. So any repair of the body, it's like uh, a car mechanics where uh, I don't have a good analogy for uh, proteins. <laughs> <laughs> it's not it the full, be, it's it like the... Uh, if, you do, if you want to fix the engine, yeah. unless you know how it works, uh, you will just try, you will uh, kick exactly. the engine and hope that it works. So all the, all, the new, all the medicines are based, or most of them, on interacting either with proteins, or with DNA that program the proteins. And most of it, 99%, is based on kind of trial and error. So if you could do it in a more intelligent way, uh, you, you have a hope for a better medicine. So, Doctor, yeah, I wanted to yeah. ask you, I mean, uh, uh, medicine laboratories spend millions or billions of billions, dollars yes. every year to research and trying to, 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 to cure many of the diseases yes. that, human, that humans can yes. today face, like cancer, AIDS, exactly. and many, many others. So, do, do you believe that your research could, could do, I mean, you mentioned the ability to create new medicines, yes. new drugs. So, it, 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 it would also help this kind of pharmaceutical companies to reduce the, the, the development cost of those new kind of medicines? In some stage, uh, there are two possible directions. One is gene editing or replacing of body parts, mm -hmm. which I, I don't we were, see how... We were just with David Cohn that he's working with, but with a Replacement. Or, 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 or other people. No, I meant really, you know. Yes. <laughs> new, they no, no. End, but yes. or a new eye. Uh, these things I cannot compete with. Uh, for example, gene editing is that after you identify that this gene is bad, you replace it. But if you want to do medicine using the body on uh, systems, and want new drugs that will interfere with regular proteins. At present, most of what the pharmaceutical companies are doing is a very, very large screening where machines are trying everything. And uh, this is what we are competing with. You want with a computer to ask the same question and to do it faster or cheaper. And also, I'm sure that with my approach, I understand better how the system works. Now, it is not clear that understanding means that you have something practical, but it is usually the case. So, uh, 
sooner or later this uh, computer aided design mm -hmm. uh, will be quantitative and uh, whether it will be complementary to screening or just competing with them, I don't know. 